Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. Power that is accessed through covenant alignment with anointed vessels. The third dimension of power. Don't assume you understand what I'm saying. Is power that is accessed by coming into covenant alignment with careers of spiritual power careers of the anointing in Philippians 1 and verse 7 popular scripture Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7 the last sentence there says ye all are partakers of my grace Paul did not say ye all are partakers of the grace or his grace he knows that it all belongs to him but with respect to what he was teaching he said it is grace given to me but you can be partakers of it ye all are partakers of my grace there is power that is accessed through genuine connection covenant alignment with men and women that have been so trusted by this grace from God it is true there are dimensions in the spirit that God will mandate that you receive and function in by reason of your connection with certain men and women that have become carriers of grace. In as much as the same Lord is rich unto all and ultimately the spirit of God is the giver of all but God has so distributed this or he has so designed this system in his kingdom there are levels of spiritual power you can never access in isolation to certain graces that God has put within your life within a territory and largely speaking within the body of Christ grace every time I have the privilege of going to minister in a nation or in a church especially if I'm preaching for any of the fathers I don't just prepare the sermon among the many things I prepare I also prepare my heart and I try to study by the Spirit and through experience and through scripture the various graces that are at work in the life of those individuals so that on one hand as I go to bless them by the privilege God has given me on another hand my heart is open to receive what grace do they carry? What standing do they have with God? Let me submit to you, my dear people, please listen to me. There are men who have a standing with God. There are men who God has covenanted and sworn by his name over their lives. They have a standing with God. There are men who have become the friend of God. Truly, there are men on earth who are friends of God. They are not just children of God. That is wonderful. But by reason of relationship and intimacy, they have come to a point where God can call them friends. Shall I hide these from my friend Abraham, seeing that he shall be a mighty man? One of the proof of friendship is that you are not afraid of opening anything, including secrets. When someone is your friend, you can open even things that are not privy to everybody and say, this is it, you are my friend. Hallelujah. There are deep things that even though everything is with respect to scripture, you have to get to a stage and a level with God where God will show you certain things that make for national impact, territorial impact across regions and continents you can be a friend of God and that comes through living a life that desires to please him completely you can be the friend of God there are people who have a stand with God that means you can tap into their work with God and experience certain possibilities that your personal spiritual level has not yet gotten you to the level that you should have. I, I, do you understand what I just said? That means based on your personal spiritual level, 
some of these results and possibilities should not be happening in your life but you can tap into their grace their covenant and their work with god and you will find yourself manifesting possibilities that are far higher than your personal level of spiritual growth even before you enter it it's true it's true I have seen people carry graces I have seen people manifest possibilities that when you vet them scripturally their level of intelligence and spiritual acumen has not gotten them to the point where they should be commanding that level of result but they have been able to align through understanding humility meekness genuine covenant connection I'll give you an instance Elisha there is no record of Elisha being personally and meticulously trained by Elijah. We know that the sons of the prophet were the ones who were being trained by Elijah. Elisha poured water in the hands of Elijah. That means when he was going for his lecture, he would serve him and wait and allow him to teach the sons of the prophet. So based on his level of renewal, based on his level of um, uh, what do we call it now maybe his 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 level of spiritual transition he could not have even received that anointing not to talk about a double portion i'm sure that's why the sons of the prophet were very casual because they knew that this guy was only wasting his time but he stood there with hunger and he says all right you desire this you have used honor you have used submission you have used genuine connection if you can see me as I'm taking and that mantle came upon him and the sons of the prophet testified they said the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah another example when Jesus sent the disciples two by two and sent them seven by seven I hope you know the Holy Ghost had not come upon them yet they were not saved none of them was born again because Jesus had not been glorified there was nowhere they would have been saved because Jesus had to die and to resurrect by the glory of the Father for anyone to be saved. So they just went with his word under his covering and as they went to preach, the Bible says they returned rejoicing. They marveled because they didn't feel anything. There was nothing around their life that should produce that result. They said even the demons were subject to us by thy name and he said do not rejoice because of the issue of demons rejoice rather that your names will be written in the in 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 heaven that should be the basis of your joy it is possible to come under a ministry like this and while you are still learning the principles of prosperity while you are still learning the principles of dominion you can genuinely come under this grace and start seeing certain results happen in your life even before you get to that realm there are people who have entered that realm already you will see that if you ask them and say defend these workings of the spirit they will tell you sincerely i am still growing however because of their covenant connection with understanding you have heard me tell you my precious people fans there is no inheritance for fans I am a fan of this I mm -mm. there is no inheritance for well-wishers it is people who connect with understanding hallelujah you look for instance at a ministry respectfully speaking like redeemed our father in the lord baba deboe and you see the spread of redeemed globally let me submit to you you will be joking to believe that that spread is just an independent reflection of every of the branch or every of the pastor's personal work with god it will be a joke there are certain things you see that is a product of a corporate grace moving people together are we together you can step into certain graces and begin to prosper even while you are learning people will see you and they will mistaken you they will even say listen come and teach us about wealth and prosperity and you say listen i will only embarrass myself i'm still learning it's just the grace of god that is at work in me some of these graces are activated through the power of prophetic speakings like when they speak over you like you're about to receive this night you see as you receive it with understanding 
The realm of the spirit responds to the fact that you received it. Listen, when he said by this time tomorrow, he did not have to wait for everybody in Samaria one by one to believe. People just sat down and by the next day they were eating well under the corporate grace of a prophet. Hallelujah. One of those profound revelations is our salvation. Imagine if everybody had to die on the cross. Jesus said, all right, I've done it for you. You saw exactly how I did it. Everybody get a carpenter, be on your way to any mountain around your area and die. There would probably be less than 100 people who will be saved by now. Because nobody will want to die. Yet he did the dying. And then he got up as a conqueror and came to you. You do not qualify. It should never be for you. You are saved by grace. And that works even not of yours. It is of God. And no one, there's no boasting there. And he gave you his life. And you simply received it by faith. And it was credited to you in the realm of the spirit. That when he died, you died too. It's not just that he died and you received his life. It's that both of you too. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not just that he died and gave me life. I also died with him. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond evil. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. I'm the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Please hear me. Do you know? The advantage of being planted in the house of God where the power and the grace of God is at work. It is a system of advantage provided for you so that while you grow, God knows that it takes time to grow. Let me tell you the truth. It takes time to be born again. It takes time to learn. It takes time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It takes time to begin to learn the ways of God. While that is happening, if the realm of the spirit and if God depended on your personal spiritual life, you may die before you come to know your rights in Christ and walk in authority. So in the interim, he places systems of advantage. One of it is the power of prophetic covering that you can come under the covering and the grace. The blood that was put on the lintel, they didn't put the blood on everybody's head. Even if you were somebody in unbelief, once you were in a house where there was blood upon the lintel, the angel of death will pass. It was not about everybody's, the, the personal fate of the individual. As for me and my house, there are times that your grace can cover the house. There are many of you, I submit to you, there are many blessings you have received today that may not necessarily be a reflection of your prayer life, your spiritual life, but certain intercessions have happened for you and you come into that inheritance because you see, when the realm of the spirit is distributing the advantage, it distributes to everyone who is part of that fold. This is true. Remember the example I gave you some time ago that when you stand to take a shower, do you have to lift your leg to touch the shower? The leg does not have to be worried. All you need to do is just stand in front of the shower. For a while it will look like it's only the head that is enjoying the water. But every part of that body will receive sufficient water as far as your bathing is concerned. That's how it is. It may start from the head. If the leg decides to go and wait at the door, then that leg will not experience that process of bathing. It is dangerous, especially in this end time, to alienate yourself from the grace and that, that corporate covering is a risk. 
and I hope you know that proximity is not the same as connection no you can be close to an anointing you can be in, within a house like this and yes not have anything happen to you look at Elisha he was very wise he said where is the Lord God of Elijah as one who had already carried the double portion he recognized God and he recognized Elijah and the Red Sea parted the Jordan parted hallelujah you are reaping where you bestowed no labor others have labored but with understanding you can step into the harvest please hear me this is why you see if you are genuinely part of this ministry my heart bleeds if there are certain graces that you don't carry in your life they, believe me this is not pride there are some graces and some dimensions of God's power that should never be a struggle for your spiritual life while you grow to step into that realm in experience there is already a portal that has been opened through sacrifice and if you have the understanding you can step on it do you believe what I'm saying you're part of this vision and men do not arise to help you you don't experience the favor of God the presence of God is a struggle no something is wrong we don't claim to have everything but there are some things he has given and for someone God brought you here to tell you you are your family members you are struggling this is unnecessary it's unnecessary you cannot come to an oasis where there's water and then you are struggling and begging and crying for water it ought not to be so they came to the one who supplies bread he multiplied bread and gave everybody they ate and ate and didn't know what to do there were five loaves and two fish I mean um, uh, 12 baskets left there are certain graces that should be at work in your life in this house you see everybody rejecting you nobody opening up doors for you you cry and there's nobody helping you you are rejecting the investment of the spirit you are also rejecting the possibilities that reside within this place is someone learning we also give that which we have received not every grace you see here just came as a result of personal encounters out of the abundance of that which we have received from the fathers that is speaking he must speak in your life too in the name of Jesus Christ you're a man of God connected to this vision it's not about size or whatever but you should not be small he said I will glorify them they will not be small I will multiply them they will not be few it's a grace have you accessed the hear ye him anointing have you accessed the grace for favor what is it about the house rent that God cannot arise and wipe your tears? Yes, you are learning, but can you not come under that grace? It's more than money. How about the manifestation of the presence of God? How about your prayer life? Apostle, I'm struggling with prayer. I don't know that grace is not there. Then there is something you are not maximizing. There is a grace in abundance that if you can open up your heart, And you receive with power and receive with grace please hear me we are in the days of his power where the nations need to see Jesus revealed through the display of the multifaceted dimension of God's power God is counting on you ladies and gentlemen God is counting on me it, thank God for all the people we keep talking about in history but they have gone they have joined the cloud of witnesses right now God is counting on us and in the name of Jesus we will not fail God in the name of Jesus you will not fail your family in the name of Jesus you will not fail this nation the days of his power where we will start hearing that someone came out of here and while he was on his way going somewhere something just happened to someone and they said the baby is dead 
and you stand and say in the name of Jesus as a child of God who has been taught I decree and declare that baby come back to life now and the baby jacks back to life and everybody within that territory the parents the families are we together that you go home and there's one church just close to your house and they say dear brother um, can you just come and share and just tell us something about the love of Jesus and you don't sit and say well I'm not really ministry you know we are not this thing about revelation it's not all of us that have it it's an indictment on the spiritual investment upon your person that you enter that church knowing that God does not call the qualified but he qualifies the call you stand being that you have been instant in season and out of season knowing that you are not alone and the Lord walking with them confirming the words with signs and wonders the opening of your mouth becomes deliverance for people and the grace of God sweeps over that assembly soul saved lives healed and changed and transformed There are some of you here, there are businesses that will call you and say, come and be part of us. Not by adding any value, become like the ark of God in the business, in the name of Jesus Christ. That people will call you and say, listen, this is, we are a group of business people. We have discerned that you carry an unusual grace for favor. And we want that grace to be at work in us. Come and be part of this business. What is my role in this business? Nothing. Just pray and speak for our welfare. That the least becomes as David. Please let me tell you this before we round up. Everything that has made you feel you are not up to. Everything that has made you feel it is not for people like you. I want you to reject it tonight in the name of Jesus. It is true that is, there is room for growth and there are levels in the spirit. But can I assure you, cast not away your confidence, my dear people. It has a great recompense of reward. Therefore, I cast every spirit that has kept you to make you feel that you are not capable. Maybe some of you in ministry, I cannot speak well. Maybe I cannot sing well. Every spirit that has brought you down, demeaning and downplaying the investment of God in your life, you are afraid of laying hands on the sick because you are afraid of embarrassment. I curse that spirit right now in Jesus' name. Hear me? Some of you, this spirit may have come as a result of mindsets you have received from people and from situations that have downplayed and demeaned you they make it look like it's not for people like you. You are very weak people. You are very this and that. You don't have to argue with anyone. But I want you to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. And do not allow anyone or anything rest in the love of God. I may not look like what you want, but he loves me. And that is the most important thing. If God has loved you and has approved you, then that is it. Don't get into this, especially this our world today of bending into all kinds of things and become a victim of people's emotion. Rest in the confidence that you are loved, you are chosen. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus, but let me tell you sincerely, I believe in myself too. Ah, I believe in myself. In the name of Jesus. I will be lying if I tell you I don't. Mm -mm. I believe in Jesus. But this man standing before you, I believe in myself. My only limit in life is the voice of God and the law of process. I don't see limitations in front of me. Truly, this is my mindset. If God sends me to any nation, as I go to that nation, I don't go there wondering what kind of demons are in that place. Will the people listen? No. There is a level of confidence, not pride, that you need to have to know that you can be trusted. God can trust you. Man of God, as we are wrapping up, the Lord is speaking to you. God believes in you. Even Satan is afraid of you, but you have refused to believe in yourself. 
crying for the approval of men as the basis of your confidence that is a big mistake you are making with your life You need to believe in Jesus and you need to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are loved. Believe that you are part of the fold of God. Please hear me. Believe that God loves you and believe that he has a great plan for you. That when God is talking about the mighty army, don't exclude yourself. Don't use any kind of sentiment, age, background, whatever it is physical mundane parameters uh -uh. there is none of us that is ever qualified enough based on the credentials of the flesh to be used by God but since he has drawn us by his mercy we come running with joy and gratitude and confidence he can send us to any nation and we will go he can tell us to take the globe and we will go there is no fear if you are afraid there are many things you will not do in your life you will be whipping up and attracting sympathy from people there are some of you is fear that has stopped you from building that house till today you have the land you have everything to start fear what will people say God must grant someone grace for somebody you should leave this meeting now and by tomorrow if somebody tells you I'm sick Tell him in the name of Jesus, can I pray for you? I have been trained. I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, be healed. Apostle, what happens is the person is not healed. You, you collect money? No. You get into trouble when you collect that if you, if you collect money. Are we together? Someone comes and tells you, do you know every door is closed? How can I reach Apostle? And you tell him, well, you may not be able to reach a person, but do you believe that I will stand and agree with you? Huh. And while you are saying that, the spirit of grace is ready for you to speak. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. And whew, a miracle happens to that person. The next time they see you, they say, Pastor. He said, no, 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 I'm a banker. I said, that's none of my business. It is the dimension of you that minister to me that I will call. The Bible said they will call you ministers of our God. There are many of you, God is about to give you a new name. Yeah. By reason of the mighty things that he's doing in and through your life. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.